so in today's video, if you're new to my channel, I've been doing anime videos, and I thought of it watching um, someone I follow on Twitter did a similar thing. So I don't know if he's done the exact same thing. I probably stole this idea completely. But I was up at three in the morning, so if I sound really bad, I um I do apologise. Um, but I'm gonna do. I've only this is out of the animes I've seen so far, which is not that many. I've probably seen about ten. But um, I'm gonna do like a hot take slash unpopular opinions of these animes and then discuss them a little bit further. So let's just do this. Um, let's go. So the first one I've wrote is Naruto, Shippuden, and Boruto are good in different ways. Now I've had a lot of people say that Boruto is not that good. I can see why they'd say that. However. It is by far my favourite. I don't know what this gleam is supposed to be. I assume it's the window. I do apologise. I don't know what to do about that. But um, yeah, I've seen a lot of people say that Naruto, uh, Boruto is not that good. Shippuden's not that good. And I've seen people say Unleashed is the best. Right, in my opinion, Shippuden's my favourite. Like, it is the best. But I enjoyed every single one for different reasons. But I do believe, I'm probably going to say one again, um, that I feel like it is important to watch Naruto Unleashed, or just Naruto, whatever you want to call it, then Shippuden, then Boruto. But you can skip Unleashed, and it will still kind of make sense, because Shippuden has so many flashbacks, and a lot of them are in Unleashed anyway. So you'll pick up, basically, what happens if you watch it. I see Shippuden's got 500 episodes, so it's longer. A lot of fillers, a lot longer, but there we go. I have no qualms against any of them. So yeah, first on opinion. Jujutsu Kaisen is super overhyped and honestly boring. However, I want to give it another watch, but it's not my ultimate fave. It's not. Um, I heard my mum watched it first. It's only one season so far. Season two's out soon. She said it was really good, so I was like, fine, I'll watch it. But I, it, honestly, I, I didn't really understand what was going on. There's a lot of shit going on. Um, I didn't really understand anything other than Gojo is the best character. Anyway, um, I want more backstory for Haikyuu. I like Haikyuu, I didn't really want to say any for Haikyuu because I have absolutely zero like negative opinions on it, however, it is based surely like strongly on the volleyball, which is the point of course, but I want to know, I want to see like more of their backstories, like how did they, you only get to see like um, Kageyama and like Hinata Shoyo's, which is fair, but I don't know anything about the others. Like, how do they become to be who they are? Actually, that is a lot. If I remember correctly, there is some flashbacks, like some backstories, but it's not... It's so minimal. You don't really see what's going on. There's not a single bad character in Black Clover. Facts, like, Black Clover's awesome. When I was watching it, I was like... I mean, I didn't like... Oh, is it Gordon, the quiet one, at first? But later on, he, like... Because he, like, mumbles a lot. And no one can understand him at all. Um, if I didn't have subtitles on, I couldn't understand what he was fucking saying. I was, I'd just be like, what? Even, like, uh, Magnus, like, no one can hear you, no one can understand you. And, like, as he go, as he gets on, like, there's a scene and he starts, like, like shouting and talking loudly, like, normally. Sorry, up uh, itchy nose. But, yeah, honestly, I don't think I hate any character. In Nazuke, in Demon Slayer, kind of annoys me. Loki annoys me. I like him, but... He's really like he just flies all the time, and it's just not it's not nice. I found Attack on Titan confusing the first time I watched it, and kind of still don't really get it. But because of Captain Levi, I stuck it out. That's true. I love Captain Levi; it's my favorite character. No, um, I understood the first part, like the whole turn it turn into Titans, turn to father Titans, and then season four just got really confusing. But I think I'm gonna read the manga and then try and understand from manga. Cause manga's like it's more in depth, you know. So. Sakura wasn't useless, but she was weaker than the other two boys and wanted to get stronger, so she did under Tsunade and once she was stronger, she really showed that. Yeah, I I was very odd with Sa Sa Sakura, Sakura because I didn't like her at all in Unleashed. In, yeah, in Naruto Unleashed. Um, her obsession with Sasuke was a bit ridiculous. And the way she treats Naruto is horrible. But, I mean, she grew on me, like, especially after she... um. She got taught by Tsunade. Um, she definitely become more useful character, but she's useful in different ways. Like the other two are good at fighting and they're very strong like in like when it comes to like battle, but in terms of like being a medical nin, she's so much better than them, so many ways. And she is massively helpful. However, i I do understand the way she feels, like being like, I want I don't want to be held back by you two. I wanna be able to fight to stand on my own. I wanna do if you two need help, I wanna be able to help you, etc. etc. So 
in a sense, like, she's a good character, but she got better as it went on, I thought. I'm gonna get battered for that. I was like, oh, Sakura's a Sakura's queen, but i a bit like, eh, she was one of them for me, just a bit, didn't really mean anything, didn't really not mean anything, just wanted someone who just was just there. But she did grow on me, like, as a character, she was, she showed her true strength by the end, and I think that's really good, especially in the war at the end, like, if you thought she was useless before that, she definitely proved her worth by the war. Definitely. Boruto was more guessable slash predictable and every arc was quick. It wasn't filled with a million fillers like Shippuden, however, that didn't stop me from enjoying it. Right, I'm gonna get bad for this too. I really, really enjoyed Boruto. But, like, if I had to say which one was, like, the best by far, it would be Shippuden. But Shippuden was more... Someone mentioned it in the chat I'm in. Um, Shippuden's more like the dark, like... Of, like nitty gritty where like the war was going on and there was like the Akatsuki and yeah and it was whereas Bruto was like everything's better everything's different everyone everything's more modern you know blah blah blah, blah. and like since like the village got destroyed after the war during the war um it was a very dark period and like like as Naruto became Hokage he he stuck to his word and he said I'm gonna bring peace to the world or to the village and the Hyuga clan's gonna change, and he wasn't wrong. Um, apart, obviously apart from Neji Dan, which I do mention in a minute. Um, yeah. Oh, he definitely changed the Hyuga clan, 100%. So he stuck with word. Classroom of the Elite should be longer, and they should follow the light novel. Um, if they did more of it, I'd watch it. I do need to read the light novel, actually, but I th I've heard, um, my brother actually told me that they're, they're not doing a season two, so it's not actually gonna go further. But I thought it was really good. I was really shocked at the end, like how, I don't want to spoil it, because you haven't watched it or are going to watch it, but honestly, I was in absolute shock by the end. I did not expect any of that to happen. I was, like, dumbfounded. It was amazing. Soul's obsession with her boss, Char, turns me off her, but I can sense she's a super strong wizard, and I want to see more of her in action. Yeah, I think I said it before in a tweet as well. Um, Like, her squad, the, is it the Blue Somethings? I can't remember what they're called, the Blue Somethings, but they're all a female-based squad. Like, they're all females, they're all like, we don't need no man, and I, I respect that 100%, like, I'm not mad at that, but I think Charlotte, her soul, only acts because of Charlotte. And in a really, really weird sense, I think that she's in love with her. I, I don't know why, but I have this, like, strong feeling. I don't know if that's, like, ever been expressed or whatever, but... Yeah, she... I don't know. I feel like if she was her own, stood up, like, a standalone character, no, like, she'd be awesome. And I know she's very strong. You see, like, um, her fight, Tech Char, and I get that. Like, she's a leader, she wants to protect her boss. I get it, but... I don't like the tie between them. I think there should be... She should be... We, I want to see more of her, like, on her own. Like, just be the sickest woman fighter whatever but yeah anyway the akatsuki is better than kara yep sorry not sorry i found the akara i felt i mean the kara were good like as enemies um the ot 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 i can't say their name ot i might put it on the screen but yeah um i prefer the, the akatsuki in shippuden um because the tachi is a member of it daedara i love daedara um Sassari was kind of cool, even though he was a really good puppet master. But Sassari was awesome. So yeah, about that. Naruto is being carried by their parents and the older sensei, and that's why I stuck it out for so long for Naruto. Sorry, not sorry, but I think if Naruto won't in it, that's why I said, I think it ends after, but as soon as Naruto dies, which I'm, that's, why I'm, that's why I'm reading the manga to find out what happens. Um, There's a new one tonight, actually. By the time this comes out, it would have already been out, so yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I do believe, like, if it weren't for their parents and, like, the, like, the Shippuden cast and, like, the older senseis, like, Akashi, um, Iruka-sensei, or now the principal Iruka, Konohamaru, it don't think, Moeji, uh, what's his name, Udon, I feel like the show would not have been as good as it was. Or not, sorry, but, yeah. Not that I don't not like the kids, but they made it better. I found Naruto's Japanese voice and unleashed irritating, so I watched it all in dub, that's the truth. I watched... Shippuden and dub as well. Um, I'm gonna bring Funimation back and rewatch it later. Yami and Captain Vandit have the best chemistry despite being on opposing squads. Honestly, I love them together, but like if you watch the backstory, they become friends first. And the Wizard King was fire, mate. I should have put that in. Fuck it, I'm gonna add that in. The Wizard King was an absolute G. Even like when he died. Spoiler alert, but yeah. Um, and then he comes back in like a, like a younger version of himself, like reincarnated. That awesome. 
Astro and Noel are so much like Naruto and Sakura, the way Noel would hit him if he got too close or made him uncomfortable. Likewise with Sakura constantly punching Naruto. The difference being, no, Noel clearly is in love with Asta, but she just doesn't want to admit to her, whereas Sakura did not like him in that way at all, which I hate because when she lied to him, Sakura lied to Naruto to get him to... Basically, I can't remember the reason. It was, like, basically to get him to, like, not act on it. And then she was going to do it herself because she was after Sasuke. And he saw right through and was like, you're lying to yourself. You don't love me. Stop lying. And he sussed her out. I, I hated that bit because for a second I thought she was genuine. And then when he went and flipped out at her and she was like, I do. It's the truth. And he was like, you're lying to me. Don't lie to me. That's when I got, like, really turned off of her. IQ was a comedy more than an actual action with a plot, except volleyball. But I think that's why I enjoyed it, because it's so much different. I love IQ. I have no disrespect for IQ. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, probably the next video or the one after. I'm going to react to the IQ dubs, because I have to, honestly, I watched it in Japanese, because I can't find the dubs anywhere. Maybe it's not anywhere not anymore, or it's wherever it was from, it's gone. But um, I, there, there's, like, compilations of it on YouTube. Honestly, it's the best thing I've ever watched. Seriously, if you've watched Q all the way through, watch the dubs. They are fucking hilarious. So I'm going to watch that. I'm going to do that and react to it, even though I've basically seen them all. You've probably seen me just repeat them. Out of the higher-ups in Demon Slayer, I forgot who they were, like, Rengoku and all that lot. Oh, the fuck were they? I can't I'll have to Google it. But, um, Rengoku ends up becoming my favourite, because despite warning Tanjiro executed, he gave him a chance of being trained. Actually, isn't Tomioka? Yeah, Tomioka's one of them as well. Tommy Oka has my entire heart and soul. I love him so much. Right. Seven Deadly Sins got confusing towards the end. Elizabeth was the most annoying female character in it. I didn't like her at all. But there we go. Um, who was the main kiddie? He was awesome. But honestly, his dub voice is fucking weird. Like, honestly, it's terrible. It's really like, high-pitched and weird. But he's meant to be, like, really old. He's in, like, a kid's body. And everyone thinks he's a kid. And he's like, no, I'm not. I'm, like, 90 years old. I'm, like, really old. He keeps getting reincarnated like, every few years. So, yeah. Mad, but yeah, there we go. I don't really like Mika all that much, or Mika all that much. Her screaming for Eren put me off her. She's a fucking simp for Eren, and she's a badass character. I'm not slating her off, but I wish she'd shut up about Eren, because he's old enough to look after himself. But there we go. There's always one girl obsessed with one of the lads. Armin had the best character growth, and he's super smart. I love Armin, because when I first started watching it, I thought Armin was going to be a weedy little kid that couldn't do anything, and he was just useless. But he's my fave. Straight up. Um, the only reason I watched JJK is because I heard Gojo was the coolest MF, but then I ended up loving Fujiguro Girl in its story. Facts, facts on facts on facts. I never bothered with season two of The Promise Neverland because season one was perfect, and even if it's super dark and maybe sad. Promise Neverland is a good one. It was one of the first I watched. I went to watch Demon Slayer first, and I watched Promise Neverland. I didn't bother with season two, but if you liked it, let me know. That would be awesome too. This is what I said earlier. You can still watch Shippuden before Unleashed and can still make sense of it. However, I fully recommend you do because of the background of everyone and how they grew into exceptional shinobi. You need to watch Unleashed first. Even if, but the funny thing is, the graphics are so like, old school because it's like 1990 or something. I think it's like as old as me. It's like 1991 or something. I'm 995. But yeah, it's a little bit older than me. That's probably why Naruto is 33, 32 in 2020, 2021. It's not, not far off, you know. The fights were by far the most iconic in Black Clover, including the tournaments further in to show off everyone's magic. My favourite has to be, and I'm going to say this now, is when Captain Langris, Vice Captain Langris, board challenges Yuno to a fight, and Yuno just goes, yeah, let's do it. And he then he ends up leaving the, um, the Golden Dawn anyway. I never really liked, I never really understood Langris. He was powerful, but he was one of them. My favourite had to be my man fucking, what's his name? Finral, Finral Ruler Case, because they were cousins, weren't they? Or something? They were related, I know that much. The outcome of Yuno's power isn't explained till the end, but seeing him in action, it's clear to see why I don't mind that you never know till much later. I don't want to spoil it, but if you watch it or have seen it, you'll know what I'm talking about, and it makes perfect fucking sense. And I don't know how I didn't clog this before, but there we go. There's a whole, like, arc on it, and it's awesome. It needs to be watched. Tomioka remains the goat because he always believed in Nezuko and helped... Tanjiro train. He wanted to be a demon slayer and he helped him out. And he t t got him in touch with, uh, I can't say, like, Ura it's a really long name. But he's got one of those, like, Ambu type masks on. That's the only way to describe it, is Ambu. But yeah, he's one of them. And he's powerful and he taught him to be a. It took him, like, two years. I didn't realize how long it took him. It took him a long time. Really long time. It's painful watching Eureka. You rap Raka and Midoriya talk because you know she likes him, but she's in denial. However, it's not based on romantic relationships, so it's not that important to the plot. 
I don't know. I really like her. I don't really like Midoriya, but uh, that should just not have been a part of it. Because I don't think they're ever going to hook up. I don't think it's going to be a thing. But there we go. The school sports festival was the best student tournament. That's in My Hero Academia. Um, still my favourite. Iconic. Um, Shoto Todoroki. My man. And Midoriya, that fight was fire. And Endeavor being like, mm, that was amazing. He just like, fuck you. I don't like you. You're not, you're not my, you're my dad, but I don't care about you. And how he chooses to have his mum's power, the frozen puck. Shoto's like half and half. He's like fire one side, ice yellow, and he uses, and then he uses fire on Midoriya. That's it. Baka goes fuming about it. He's like, why you never used it on me? And it's just, Baka goes weird. Um, all the villains bore me. Again, my hero. Um, all my expect than Endeavor. Oh, not sorry. Shigaraki one of the best antagonists. He's not in it very much, he's in the new one, which I haven't watched yet. Hawks is my favourite hero. My heart's all. I love Hawks. He's so witty. I love witty, quick characters. Uh, anyway, uh, My Hero Academia is long and season 5 is a little slow, but I recommend sticking it out. Someone I saw said that season 5 is poo. Don't bother with it. I wish Tenya was my best friend because of how clever he is, and he doesn't like Midora to start, but once they're friends, he really has his back. I think Tenya's solid. Ten Tenya actually kills me. He's so funny. Shoto Todoroki. Loads of greater than signs because he's the best character ever. I don't even care what anyone says. Bakugo is quite possibly the, mo the more irritating character, but that's who he is. And Minotaur is by far the worst. He doesn't even give anything to plot. Sorry, I don't like Minotaur. I don't care what anyone says. He's just a pervert. He does nothing. He gets nothing out. His work isn't that great, really. I mean, it works in certain situations, but I'm not a massive fan. And back to Naruto. Gara's childhood makes me cry, so I can't watch it. I skip it. Same as Naruto's. I can't watch Naruto's flashbacks. And there's certain scenes, I'll tell you another one, I'll add it on, it's not on my list, but the moments between Aruka sensei and Naruto are my favourite. And also another one, when he meets Minato, his dad for the first time inside of Kurama or himself, and he punches him, that's an iconic scene. And I, don't, I love when he meets his mum, Kushina, and just hugs her and cries in her, I love the contrast, how he's like fuming with his dad, but actually falls apart at the side of his mum. And his mum's fucking scary. So there we go. But thank you for watching. Um, I, pr I hope you enjoyed. If you have any opinions of your own, let me know. I'd like to battle it out with you. Um, if you've seen any other animes, let me know. If you like any of the ones I've listed, let me know. I'll see you in a week. Peace.